In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Good morning, everyone. For those of you who are visiting, I'm Bishop Edward Burns. I am the Bishop of the Diocese of Dallas, and it is on behalf of Abbot Peter and the entire community here that I welcome all of you, and in particular to Brother Christopher's family, his loved ones, who have traveled in order to be here for this wonderful day in which Brother Christopher is raised to the dignity of the priesthood of our Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, he has prepared himself a long time for this day. And we too prepare ourselves to enter into sacred mysteries. As we prepare ourselves to enter into the mysteries of the Eucharist, we take a moment, call to mind our sins, and we ask God for his gift of forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Lord our God, who in governing your people make use of the ministry of priest, grant a per persevering obedience to your will to this deacon of your church, whom you graciously choose today for the office of the priesthood, so that by his ministry and life he may gain glory for you in Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me thus, 
Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. Ah, Lord God, I said, I know not how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord answered me, Say not, I am too young. To whomever I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Have no fear before them, because I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord extended his hand and touched my mouth, saying, See, I place my words in your mouth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The scepter of your power the Lord will stretch forth from Zion, rule in the midst of your enemies. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Yours is princely power in the day of your birth, in holy splendor, before the day star like the dew I have begotten you. You are a priest forever, in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord has sworn and he will not repent. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, as in one body we have many parts, and all the parts do not have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually parts of one another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us exercise them. If prophecy, in proportion to the faith. If ministry, in ministering. If one is a teacher, in teaching. If one exhorts, in exhortation. If one contributes, in generosity. If one is over others, with diligence. If one does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, 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 oh. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. There was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone jars there for Jewish ceremonial washing, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it out. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine, without knowing where it came from, although the servants who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves good wine first. And then when people have drunk freely, an inferior one, but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this at the beginning of his signs in Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let the one who is to be ordained a priest come forward. Present. Deacon Brother Christopher Collin. Present. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain this man, our brother, to the responsibility of the priesthood. 
Do you know him to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those concerned with his formation, I testify that he has been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we choose this, our brother, for the order of the priesthood. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Again, it is a, an absolute joy for me to be here at Our Lady of Dallas Monastery to celebrate yet once again um, a wonderful moment in the life of this monastery and to celebrate yet once again an ordination here and to celebrate with my brothers in this monastery the regeneration of this monastery and and to watch it grow and, and strengthen, it is um, an absolute joy. And with all of it, I will tell you that as the bishop, a significant moment in my ministry is when I have the opportunity to ordain a man, and especially to ordain a man to the priesthood. It causes me to reflect on my own ordination and my own priesthood. I was born and raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I was ordained a priest for the Diocese of Pittsburgh in 1983. That was 40 years and 40 pounds ago. And <laughs> it, it was for me just a joy. Um, my uh, very first parish and today's date is significant for me because my very first parish as a priest was Our Lady of Lourdes. And today is the feast of Our Lady of Lourdes. And with that, I recall arriving at this small coal mining town in western Pennsylvania with my two suitcases and um, approaching the door of the rectory, showing up for my first assignment. It was after I had the chance to meet the pastor that I learned that we also had a live-in housekeeper. And those uh, live-in housekeepers are really a thing of the past in, in our parishes, it seems like. But this live-in housekeeper, she was such a woman of faith, and she said to me, Father, welcome to Our Lady of Lords here in Burgettstown. And we're so pleased to have you, and I want to tell you, I can tell that you are a Marian priest. I said, oh really, and, and how is that? She said, well, I read your biography, and I saw that you were born on October 7, the feast of Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary. And then you were baptized, and it's true, I was baptized in the church of Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary. That's where I went to school. I went to Holy Rosary grade school. And at Holy Rosary grade school, we get uh, the feast of Our Holy Rosary, the, Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary is a day off. I thought it was my birthday, you know, but <laughs> it, it was the case in my first uh, confession, my first communion. Then I, she said to me, and, and then you went off to seminary, and you went to Mount St. Mary's in Emmitsburg, Maryland, and then you are assigned here at Our Lady of Lourdes, and you have blue eyes. And I said, well, there you have it. Well, it was interesting. After that, I, I, I so wanted to, uh, I called her whenever I got uh, reassigned from Our Lady of Lourdes and I went to Immaculate Conception Parish in Washington, PA. And then the life continues to go on and I was assigned the Bishop of the Diocese of Juneau, Alaska. And the cathedral there is the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And, and then I'm assigned here to our, uh, Dallas, and the cathedral is Our Lady of Guadalupe. I share all that because we had a chance, uh, Brother Christopher and I, to speak about the Blessed Mother before this ordination, 
and how she does indeed play a part in our lives. And God bless Brother Christopher. He just completed recently the consecration to our Blessed Mother. You know, and, and with that consecration comes an opportunity to give your life, an opportunity to really fulfill and model your life after our Blessed Mother, being called from the womb in, in order to answer God's call, and then to do whatever he tells you. And in that moment, knowing that you are stepping into a mystery that you have no idea what the Lord has in store for you. And this guy from Western Pennsylvania can tell you that. I had no clue what the Lord had in store for me. So it was our Blessed Mother who felt for this newly wedded couple an embarrassment of no more wine. And she turns to her son, they have no more wine. What does this concern of yours have to do with me? He, she just simply said to the head waiter in charge, do whatever he tells you. As we heard in scripture, it's Jesus' very first miracle. In other words, our Blessed Mother never saw her son perform a miracle before. She had no clue what he was going to do. But she knew she could put all her trust in him. And indeed, she did. We don't know what the Lord is going to do with us when we turn our lives over to him. When we ask him to use us as his instruments to raise us to the dignity of the sacred so as to bring forth his kingdom here on earth. And so this day we pray for Brother Christopher as he lays down his life for the church, for our Lord, for this monastery, for the people he serves, and in that do we aid him with our prayers. And it is our responsibility to help prepare him for what lies ahead. For what lies ahead is a wonderful mystery. It is the mystery in which our Lord Jesus Christ calls us to. As we enter into the mystery of the Eucharist. As we enter into the mystery of the word of God as we enter into the mystery of the gifts that he has given us and how he calls us to use them. And yes, for Brother Christopher, as he enters into the mystery of holy orders and religious life, there in lies for us also in Brother Christopher a great gift. And in this celebration do we give thanks for Brother Christopher in his stepping forward, for his having the courage, the ability, and the dedication and commitment to say, Lord, I do trust in you. If you are indeed calling me to this, then bless me, anoint me, consecrate me, for I desire to do your will. It does take a special courage to do all that to look to the future, knowing that our Lord Jesus Christ will never abandon us. And then, as Brother Christopher is ordained in this Mass, he will configure himself to our Lord Jesus Christ. And from this day on, he will serve in persona Christi. For he will stand before all of you and say, This is my body. And this is my blood. He will say to many, I absolve you of all your sins. In those moments, acting in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so he is configured to him. So in my moments, and I hope Brother Christopher forgives me, in sharing a little bit of the conversation we had 
before this ordination, and we had a chance to pray together, and I asked him, Brother Christopher, do you have any questions at all? He said, yes. Do I have the faculties to hear confession? I said, yes, you do, absolutely. And I apologize, he didn't get the letter yet and all this kind of stuff. So he, I said, but, as I say this to every newly ordained priest, I said, but, I will tell you right now, if you have not memorized the words of absolution, it's important that you have them right there in your pocket so that you know them. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a part of the, the sign that's necessary for, for confession. He goes, oh, yes, indeed. He goes, in one, my one pocket, I have the words of absolution right in my pocket. I said, oh, that's great. And he, then, he can, then he tells me, he goes, and in the other pocket, I have a stole also. So he's equipped. He has a stole in one pocket. He has the words of absolution in the other pocket. This guy's going to be a spiritual gunslinger, you know. <laughs> Because we know that there is a battle against evil. And we also know that there is a need that people come to their priests. So as to complete the journey of sanctification, of forgiveness, of being one with our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why they come to priests. So as to come closer to our Lord and as Brother Christopher serves in the person of Jesus Christ, in his words, in his preaching, in his action, in his ministry, we long to see the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that through him, we may come ever closer to our Lord and then continue to trust in him when our Lord calls us to service. Christopher, may God who has begun this good work in you bring it to completion. Amen. <clears throat> Dear son, before you proceed to the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people your resolve to undertake this office. Do you resolve to discharge unfailingly, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the office of the priesthood in the presbyteral rank, as a trustworthy co-worker with the order of bishops in the feeding of the Lord's flock? I do. Do you resolve to carry out the ministry of the word worthily and wisely in the preaching of the gospel and the teaching of the Catholic faith? I do. Do you resolve to celebrate the mysteries of Christ reverently and faithfully according to the tradition of the church, especially in the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the praise of God and for the sanctification of the Christian people? Do you resolve to implore with us the mercy of God for the people entrusted to you with zeal for the commandment to pray without ceasing? I do. Do you resolve to be united more closely each day to Christ the High Priest who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice and with him to consecrate yourselves to God for the salvation of all? Do you promise? <clears throat> Do you promise respect and obedience to the diocesan bishop and to your legitimate superior? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Amen.
Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Almighty Father, that he pour forth heavenly gifts in abundance on this his servant, whom he has chosen for the office of the priesthood. Let us kneel. Thank you. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saints Michael and all angels, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saints Peter and Paul, pray for us. Saint Andrew, Pray for us, Saint Matthew. Pray for us, Saint Mary Magdalene. Pray for us, Saint Stephen. Pray for us, Saint Ignatius of Antioch. Pray for us, Saint Lawrence. Pray for us, Saints Perpetua and Felicity. Pray for us, Saint Agnes. Pray for us, Saint Gregory. Pray for us, Saint Augustine. Pray for us. Saint Athanasius, pray for us. Saint Basil, pray for us. Saint Martin, pray for us. Saint Christopher, pray for us. Saint Benedict, pray for us. Saints Robert, Albrecht, and Stephen, pray for us. Saint Bernard, pray for us. Saint Francis, pray for us. Saint Dominic, pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena, Pray for us, Saint Francis Xavier. Pray for us, Saint Teresa of Jesus. Pray for us, Saint Elizabeth and Seton. Pray for us, Saint John Paul the Second. Pray for us. All holy ones of God, pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From every evil, Lord, deliver us, we pray. From every sin, Lord, deliver us, we pray. From everlasting death, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection, Lord, deliver us, we pray. 
by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners. Lord, we beg you hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless this chosen man. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify this chosen man. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless, sanctify, and consecrate this chosen man. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Hear us, we pray, O Lord our God, and pour out upon this your servant the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the power of priestly grace, that you may surround, that you may surround with your rich and unfailing gifts the one whom we present to your fatherly care for consecration. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us stand.
please. Draw near, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, author of human dignity and bestower of all graces, through whom all things progress, through whom everything is made firm, who by the power of the Holy Spirit, in order to form a priestly people, establish among them ministers of Christ your Son in various orders. Already in the earlier covenant, there arose offices instituted by mystical rites, so that when you had set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them, you chose men next in order and dignity to join them and assist them in their work. Thus, in the desert, you instilled the spirit of Moses in the minds of 70 wise men. With them as helpers, he more easily governed your people. So too, over the sons of Aaron, you poured an abundant share of their father's fullness, that the number of priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, the Apostle and High Priest of our confession. Through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself unblemished to you and made his apostles, who were consecrated in the truth, shares in his mission. To them, you added companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation through all the world. Now we pray, O Lord, provide also for our weakness this helper whom we need for the exercise of apostolic priesthood. Grant, we pray, Almighty Father, to this your servant the dignity of the priesthood. Renew deep within him the spirit of holiness. May he hold the office second in order, received from you, O God, and by the example of his manner of life, may he inspire right conduct. May he be a trustworthy co-worker with our order, so that by his preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, may he be a faithful steward of your mysteries, so that your people may be renewed through the cleansing waters of rebirth and refreshed from your altar so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up. May he be joined to us, Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to him and for the whole world. Thus may the full number of the nations gathered together in Christ become your one people, brought to perfection in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. Okay. Thank you.
May the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. Amen. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you will do. Imitate what you will celebrate. And conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. me, O Lord, from my iniquities, cleanse me of all my sins. Guys are doing an excellent job. Thank you. Pray, friends, to my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Amen. God, who have willed that your priest should minister at the holy altar and serve your people, grant by the power of this sacrifice, we pray, that the labors of your servants may constantly please you, and in your church, bear that fruit which lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, high priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood, the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become shares in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, we strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, 
we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his sa the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of Christ, your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Christopher, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. 
Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop, the Order of Bishops. This your servant, who has been ordained today as a priest for the church, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us turn and offer to one another a sign of that peace. Christopher, peace with you. Congratulations once again. Peter, peace with you. Great to be with you. Peace Thanks for all you doing.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ, the body of, may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen, may Almighty God bless you and keep you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, body of Christ. The body of Christ. The, bo the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ. May Almighty God bless you and your loved ones, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ, the body of Christ. body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ may Almighty God bless you Father Son and Holy Spirit Amen may Almighty God bless you and keep you Father Son and Holy Spirit Amen the body of Christ. 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 
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The bo- May Almighty God bless you and keep you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. May all men God bless you and your loved ones, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. May Almighty God bless you and keep you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 In the name of God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. body of Christ. The body of Christ. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ.
Yes, exactly. There is. Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priests and to all your servants, that united to you in unfailing love, they may receive the grace of giving worthy service to your majesty, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing and a word from Bishop Burns at the very end, I would like to thank you all once again for coming. And in a very particular way, I want to thank Mary and Bob. Um, the priesthood is a gift to an individual, but it's a gift that's longed for by a family and by an entire community. It's a gift that's nourished by the family and by the community. I have a couple requests. First is that you keep Brother Christopher, Father Christopher in prayer. <laughs> Bishop Burns has directed all of us what we should be praying for that he remain a Marian priest and a spiritual gunslinger. <laughs> so do keep him in your prayers. My second request is that you continue to pray for all of us here at Cistercian, that we might be blessed with further vocations like Brother Christopher so that we can continue serving the diocese. We're particularly grateful to Bishop Burns for joining us today um, on this wonderful occasion, but we're grateful to Bishop Burns on every occasion. Um, we're grateful that he's guiding the diocese and he's so close to Cistercian. After we process out, um, we will come right back in, uh, Bishop Burns and Father Christopher and I, for pictures and pictures with the family, after which Father Christopher will impart his first blessing, his first priestly blessing to all those who wish in, the front, of, in front of the altar. And we invite all of you to join us in the courtyard to check on Brother Christopher, Father Christopher's pockets to see if he indeed has the <laughs> Act of, um, the confession there, um, but to also to share in our joy. I also want to say a word of gratitude, first of all, for um, Father Christopher's family and for the gift of their son, brother, uh, to the church and to this wonderful monastery. What a powerful gift. And, and trust me as I say, this monastery is a gift to the Diocese of Dallas and to the church at large. Your son's going to be very well taken care of. He's going to have a very spe special place in our prayers and with our fraternal care and concern. To all of you, I will say that to be here and to celebrate different events within this monastery is a joy for me. When I see the strength and the beauty and the presence of this monastery, it just lifts up my heart because I know that this, this, this monastery sanctifies the diocese by its presence and the prayers of the members of this monastery. Thanks also to the music, the, the, the singing and the, the uh, choir. Thanks so much for all those who have prepared for this event. And so I'm going to ask God's blessing upon all of you. Father Christopher is then going to impart his blessing upon me and, and then Father Abbott, and then we will proceed with the recessional. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who founded the church and guides her still, protect you constantly with his grace that you may faithfully discharge the duties of the priesthood. Amen. Amen. May he make you a servant and a witness to the world, to divine charity and truth, and a faithful minister of reconciliation. Amen. Amen. And may he make you a true shepherd to provide the living bread and the word of life to the faithful that they may continue to grow in the unity of the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
And Father Christopher, as the Bishop of the Diocese of Dallas, and on behalf of the entire Diocese of Dallas, all the priests of this diocese, and all those gathered here, congratulations on your ordination. My friends, the Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.